times like this when the power and the value of STEM learning ecosystems community of practice becomes very visible. Presented by STEM at Home, an initiative launched by the STEM Learning Ecosystems Community of Practice, STEM Families Virtual Home Lab is a series of workshops to share practical tips, virtual experiments, and other concrete tools that families, even those with little time, few resources, and no STEM exposure or teaching experience, can use to engage their children's learning. STEM education leaders from across the country will offer a variety of activities for different age groups to engage students in STEM learning with resources that you have around the house. Before we begin, we want to let you know about a few Zoom features that we'll be using. Uh, first, we recommend sharing your thoughts and questions in the chat. We have one of our education experts, Julie Hasfield, the Global Director of Curriculum and Design for TIES, in there answering your questions. We'll also be posting a PDF of the PowerPoint and links to resources in the chat for everyone to have easy access to. Next, so we can bring participants on live to ask questions. Uh, in this case, we'll share your microphone so that everyone can hear you. And finally, you can find all of our webinars and podcasts on our YouTube page, search STEM Ecosystems and subscribe, or access the links on our website, stemecosystems.org. Now let's take a moment to introduce our guest host and our STEM family. Sri Srinivasan is the founder of the Association for Sustainability Education, a not-for-profit that teaches students on sustainability, invention, entrepreneurship through the standards-aligned ASE Innovate program. Sri has been in STEM education for over a decade, running state and federal programs, founding and launching ed tech products. Uh, Sri created the ASE Innovate program to empower students on global sustainability issues through innovation and entrepreneurship. Sri, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Jeremy, for that lovely introduction. I'm so happy to be here with you all today. So, Shri, how is the, the ASE Innovate program, how has it had to change to address the shifts in education due to this pandemic and to virtual learning? So, a week before uh, our schools closed here in California, there was the rumor floating around that um, schools will close. And uh, the first thing I did was to uh, get a Zoom Pro account and make sure I familiarized myself with what Zoom can offer and uh, get parenthood permissions to be sure that uh, students can uh, be a part of the Zoom sessions and that there is a potential we might be recording it and sharing it for those who miss it. So that, uh, so we had to think more of a virtual life and a virtual means of communicating with our students. And because they invent and they need supplies, the first thing I had to figure out besides Zoom was what are they gonna do about these supplies? What are they going, how are they gonna access materials? and be very creative and innovative in sourcing that for them. Thank you. Um, so for those of you watching live, uh, please tell us where you are, or where you're from in the chat box. Um, we may have the opportunity later to go uh, to, to share cameras from, from some of the kids who are watching to show us the things that they create. Um, but we will also be talking um, right now to our STEM family. Our STEM family this week is joining us uh, all the way from Chicago, uh, the Siciliano family. For those of you that don't know Mark, Mark is the managing partner of TIES, the STEM consulting group that operates the STEM ecosystems. Uh, so Mark, Shannon, Sienna, Karina, welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, just thought we'd take a, a few minutes to talk a little bit about uh, our family and how we're approaching this. Um, I think first and foremost, it's important that we recognize uh, we are fortunate to be in a position to be able to work from home. And we recognize that not all families um, are, you know, are in that situation. So we, we don't lose sight of that. Um, but you know, even with that, we um, communicate pretty often and pretty regularly about how we're trying to balance this. Uh, we, we really believe in setting boundaries and taking balance seriously all the time. And particularly in a time like this, we don't want to lose sight of that either. So uh, we're doing our best to uh, manage workflow, communicating as partners and thinking about how we are also supporting both of our, our daughters uh, in the learning process. Um, but and it's, yeah, we definitely don't, don't get it right all the time. Um, and so it's trial and error these days, right? How's school going? <laughs> medium. It's going medium. Me listen, medium. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, you know, uh, uh, Mark, Shannon uh, mentioned a couple things that I think are, are, are really important for us all to be thinking about. The first, what Mark was talking about, we are incredibly lucky. If you are on this, you are in a very small percentage globally. Um, so one of the calls to action that we have with all of these sessions is to ask you um, 
students who are on, parents who are on. If you like what you're seeing today, if you like the activities, try to think about how you can get those out to your community, to people who might not have access. Um, it's obviously more fun and interesting, I think, um, to do it when there's cameras and other kids who are working together, but all these activities can be done in any home. And uh, like Shannon mentioned, parents who are on here, I, you know, I, I, I read a lot of Twitter, probably more than I should. And all I think when I read Twitter is moms, dads, take a breath, relax. It's okay. Um, if we are keeping our kids healthy and we are keeping them engaged, um, we're doing the best that we possibly can. And anything that we do above that um, is just, you know, just kind of gravy. So Mark Shannon, what kinds of things, you, you mentioned that you're making sure to have that balance. What kinds of things are you doing to ensure uh, that your family has the time and attention that they need? So we um, have tried to stick to, and I won't say a schedule, but more so a rhythm um, as best as possible. I think it's just, it's great for the kids to know kind of what's coming next. And then for each of us, you know, we're both still working. And so we just try to balance um, between the two of us. So we have, you know, Mark, his primary hours are in the morning and I do a little bit of homeschooling then, and then we try to have lunch together. Uh, our two-year-old, likes uh, sometimes she likes to take a nap, and then, uh, you know, Mark is able to do a little bit more work and spend time with our six-year-old um, while I work. And so, it's again, it's not perfect every day, but we, we try to, to do our best to, to stick to some sort of rhythm. That makes a lot of sense. All right, we're going to turn it over now to Shri, who's going to lead our activity today using Scamper, uh, which she'll talk about. Um, Scamper is an easy way for parents and caregivers to structure inquiry, which we'll also be talking more about, uh, questioning that'll lead your kids to some amazing um, and innovative, inventive ideas that solve problems. Shri? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to go back and forth between a PowerPoint, which is already shared with you, or if it, or it will be soon shared with you, um, uh, to show a few things that will make it uh, clear. And, um, and, but I'll be talking to you in person uh, for the most part of this presentation. On that note, I'm gonna share my screen to set the agenda for today. So we are going to talk about uh, how boredom and creativity go hand in hand. And we're gonna start by understanding what inventions and innovations are and do an activity called Scamper, which is actually where we are going to innovate our boredom. And I'll leave you with an idea for creating a board bag so that when we are not together, you can still continue the Scamper and still continue innovating your boredom. Sounds like a plan. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and I, so that I can talk to you. Um, so one of the, so what I, I want to introduce myself in, with relevance to what I do and why it matters today. Um, I am a biochemist who went into education and um, having had many roles uh, all the way from the federal government to running edtech tech startups, uh, what I am more passionate about is the curiosity and the creativity that is innate to students. And what the ASC Innovate program does is help students understand the invention and innovation ecosystem and their own environments and pick a problem and invent a solution. So I'll show you some of the inventions that our students came up with and uh, at the end of the presentation. But um, so the whole concept of invention innovation is very core to our program. And, and, and what better time to think about innovation and invention than now when we are all home and when we don't have that rush of running around and you know those check marks to make in terms of like, hey, I need to be here by this time. So this is an amazing time for us to be um, innovating and uh, thinking about invention. So we'll talk about invention and I want you to take a minute and think about what does the word invention mean to you? What does it mean to you? Um, you can chat, you can type in the chat box and uh, let the moderators know what the word invention means to you. And uh, we'll come back and discuss in probably like 30 seconds. So those of you watching, what does, what does invention mean to you? I like that to create something with a purpose, a new way to use something. Wonderful. Something to solve a problem, thinking outside the box to solve a problem. 
those are all some amazing answers. It's something new, it's never been made, it's original and it, it's, it solves a problem. And, and keep that thought process going. Don't stop thinking about the word invention. If something else pops up, you can still uh, type it away. Um, so inventions typically are intended to solve a problem, but there are some inventions which ended up with a nice to have gadget or a nice to have product in, in the market. Um, uh, that said, um, I want to um, talk about a few inventions that we don't really think about as inventions and they've been age old and they changed how humanity works and operates and where we are today. So one of the most significant inventions is paper. We don't think about paper as inventions, but paper, a book, one of your favorite books, that's a very crucial invention because without paper, we, there wouldn't have been a do way to document what happened um, through science or trade or history for that matter. Think about the Declaration of Independence, that's paper. So paper, textbooks, books, that's an age old invention that actually changed how the humankind progressed throughout the century. So paper is an invention. And uh, we, we have these uh, other things that we use in our daily life that we don't think about as inventions. A TV remote, that is an invention because we're not walking to the TV to change channels, are we? We don't even have those uh, buttons anymore to change channels, so this is an invention. Uh, uh, Shree, you know, when, when I was a kid, I was the remote control. I don't know about the rest of you, but I had to lay on the floor right in front of the TV. And when my dad said, go to channel three, it went click, click, click to channel three. Oh, yeah, I'm there with you, Jeremy. I think, yeah, kids are assigned, the assigned remote of those days. Yeah, that's a good one. And the phone, we use the phone for everything, right? I'm going to come back to this phone example in another context, but the phone, that's an invention. And here's something that with all kids in this um, Zoom session, um, you, you see uh, a Tylenol or your medicine, the vaccines that we're talking about, especially today, the whole healthcare system, that's an invention. Uh, so all these are inventions that we use in our daily lives, but we don't quite think of them as inventions. And then moving on to food, kitchen gadgets, even food, you know, like uh, your Pop-Tarts, somebody had to come up with the idea. So all kinds of kitchen gadgets, they're all inventions. I, if I were in my kitchen, I would have like said, oh, look at my refrigerator or my microwave or my oven or my blender that made my morning smoothie. So these are all inventions that we live around, but we don't quite think of them as inventions, but somebody had to come up with the idea, create it, test it, make it better. And it wasn't just making it better or for the first time, by one person, but then inventions kept improving over time and that is an innovation. So I'm gonna pause here and share my screen because I wanna talk about the differences between an invention and an innovation. I hope you're all able to see my screen well. Yeah, we see it. Thank you. And uh, I, I'm not able to sh put it on full screen mode because then you lose it. Um, but sorry, I'm uh, somebody from STEM Ecosystems is asking for a permission and I approved, but Zoom is asking me for more controls. Um, so should I approve it? Because I don't know if it'll ask me to restart my, I'll just deny. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so. So the phone, I, I told you, right? I'll, I'll come back to the phone. The phone that we see today, this wasn't how it was when it first came out. The iPhone, it wasn't the iPhone 11. Are we on 11 now? Yeah, 11 that we came out. Uh, or it, it didn't even look like an iPhone when the phone first came out. Um, it looked like the one here with the first circle where, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen where you take the phone and then dial and then talk to someone on the other end. So you need to say, hi, this is Shri. Can I please talk to Jeremy in your house? And then Jeremy gets put on the line and that's how it was. And then so you couldn't call someone if they weren't home. So that, that's how the phone that was invented kept innovating over years and, and close to a century. And it's what it is now. And it wasn't done by one person. So there's a group of people who act on inventions and innovate them. And the other innovation that you all are going to be familiar with when I show is 
your uh, console for any kind of your video game or your remote for the video game, um, ask your parents or ask somebody in your house, is this what you played with? Did it look like that? Um, you know, Shree, um, I, I wish I, I didn't know you were going to bring this because I would have brought it up. Um, for I, I have down in my basement um, this thing called the Odyssey, which was the very first at-home video game system. And it is, I'm not joking, uh, this big, if you, if you can see me, it is um, like four feet wide. Um, and it only plays Pong with two controllers. And you compare that to, you know, I have the Xbox One X and the Switch and the PlayStation 4 and all those things and, and the, the difference in, in ability. So are you saying that those other systems aren't inventions? Those are innovations from the original invention. Somebody had to come up with the original concept of like, we can play Go games in a virtual world with characters that are around a virtual world and people over the years kept innovating on it, saying, okay, how can we make that virtual world better? How can we access it better? How can we present it better? And so innovations came out of those original inventions. So we spoke about inventions uh, and uh, we spoke about innovations. I'm gonna sh uh, stop sharing my screen so that I can talk to you about the third category, which is what's naturally occurring. Is everything around us an invention or an innovation? No, we have things that are naturally occurring, like this plant that I have, like you and me, your pet animal, be it a cat or a dog, look outside the window, you'll see what's all naturally occurring. Your fish, your turtle, um, whatever pet you have, those are all naturally occurring. So we spoke about inventions, we spoke about innovations, and we spoke about what is naturally occurring. And I wanna leave you with one small thought on invention before I suggest an activity. Are all inventions complex? Are all inventions like the phone, does it all need electricity? No, there are some simple inventions that we use. Um, like all the stationery, my scissors, my marker, and the stapler. And um, I want to talk, I've always been fascinated by one simple invention, a paper clip. We have so many kinds of paper clips. And I, you know, why do you think we have all these different kinds of paper clips? They all put paper together, but why do we have so many different kinds of paper clips? Each one serves a purpose. This one can take maybe 12 sheets of paper, the binder clip can take a lot more, but then somebody had to think through this problem like, hey, that doesn't work. I need something better and then come up with something else and then something else or in whichever order. Some, some, but somebody had to think through like, that's not working. What do we do to make it work better? And that's how the invention and innovation process works. And I'm going to ask you, to indulge me in typing into the chat box, what do you think is the best invention of all? I have my answer, but I want to know what your answer is. What do you think is the very best invention in your opinion? It's your opinion, so all answers are good answers. Okay. I like, I like uh, the bed. That's the awesome. bed. That's I'm awesome. I'm also yeah. a fan of the bed. Video games. We are. Uh, we play a lot of. It's a lot of Animal Crossing right now in our house. Logo, cardboard, awesome, wheel. Wheel, yeah. Bathrooms, yes. Shoes, shoelace. Oh, I like the shoelace tip, the aglet. That's... Excellent, the, the wheel, again, microwave. All right, so how, um, if, if, if I have kids in my house or, or if I am one, um, how can I use this? What, what, what should I be thinking about as I look through my house? So if you, that's the activity we're going to do next. And I, I want to give out my answer before that. Um, Perfect. My answer, it's again, my opinion is electricity because with mm. electricity is what so many other things came up. So for me personally, I've thought to, and because I've taught this class and I have the time to think about this, um, I feel electricity is one of the most significant inventions that we benefit from and we don't even think about it. Um, so I, for me, it is electricity, but all those answers are amazing answers. And cardboard, I never thought about cardboard. So thank you to who said cardboard there. That I'm going to keep thinking about it. The wagon and the wheel, that's another item that I would like to talk about. The wagon, the wheel is what became the cars of today, the electric cars. So, so that's the invention to the innovation uh, spectrum. 
And so, so now that we have uh, spoken about inventions, innovations, and what's naturally occurring, let's talk about what we can do with it. Um, you could do this at the end of this session. Um, and what you do is take a sheet of paper, walk around where you live. Um, if you have a window, look through the window. If you can look through the window, if you have a balcony, go outside the balcony, but take a sheet of paper. And if I, I and no, this is going to be a mirror image, but um, uh, on one column, write invention and one column, write nature and write down what you see that's an invention and what problem does it solve? What problem does it solve? The phone, it helps me take pictures. The plant has leaf. It makes food for the uh, plant. So, so under inventions, write what you see and what problem it solves. And under nature, write what you see and what's its purpose. What does your pet do? What is the purpose of a pet? So write about inventions and innovations. And if, you, if those of you who are watching are in the middle school age or older, you could take this a little more complex. And you know what you can do? Um, you can write it as three columns, inventions, innovations, and nature. So under inventions, you write what you see, what problem it solves. Under innovation, you can see was this the original invention or was it innovated upon something? And you can write your thoughts under innovation, like the video game or the phone or anything, uh, or fridge. Um, and under nature, you write about what you see and what purpose it serves. So you have the invention, innovation, and nature. So depending on where your comfort level is, you could either do two columns, again, invention or innovation. I'm sorry, invention uh, and nature. Or if you want to challenge yourself and do something more complex, uh, invention, innovation, and nature. So three columns. Um, so that's something um, you, you can think about when you finish this uh, online meeting today and go walk around. And it doesn't have to stop today. When you go for a walk in your neighborhood, you can do this. Uh, we can spot it. And um, if you have younger siblings, you could play a game with it saying like, I spy with my two eyes uh, an invention and then give them clues or make this like 20 questions. I'm thinking about an invention and then they can ask you 20 questions about that invention or you can, so you can come up with your uh, games uh, like I spy or 20 questions or um, you can, you know, the word game where you all sit around a group and if I say uh, Shri and then you know, the next person is Jeremy, he has to, use the last alphabet. So you could do that with invention. So if I say phone, the last alphabet is E. So the next person who, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremy, I'm picking on you again because you- No, it's okay. Um, so, so actually, Shri, I'm, I'm wondering if we could take a, a quick second and um, if anyone listening has started to, to write things down, create a list, um, go ahead and say something in the chat and we'll turn your microphone on for a few folks and for a few of you and we can um, uh, hear what you're finding. Um, if we could start by going to um, uh, Isabel, who is our, our friend, Julia Hasfield, who's in the chat, um, her daughter. Hey, Isabel. Um, but if anybody else has something to share, go ahead and post in the chat and we'll, we'll turn your camera and your microphone live. Isabel, what, what, have, what have you found around your house? So I, uh, so for in the invention, I looked out the window and I saw a dog toy and I put, it helps like the dog have fun and not be bored. And then on nature, I put soil, and then I put that it helps plants grow. Wonderful. That's really interesting. Hey, anybody else? If you're uh, if you're if you're there in chat, just just say me. Um, and I see a couple folks on camera. You know what? I am not sure if anybody else is ready. So so um, Shree, if we while we're waiting to see if anybody else wants to share, if we have Isabel's list, um, what does she do with that next? She continues to improve on her list and you can challenge yourself or somebody else at home saying, who comes up with the first 10 or who comes up with the first five or whatever number you're comfortable with. And you can make a game out of it and challenge yourself saying, yesterday I came up with 10, can I come up with 15 today? Or have a challenge with someone at home and, and make a game out of it and look for inventions and what 
I like how Isabel thought through the problem and the purpose so clearly. Mm -hmm. it's not just spotting inventions, but thinking about what problem does it solve. And Isabel, my, my um, suggestion to you going forward would be to make it more interesting now that you nail the invention in nature, add the innovation section to it and see, was, it, was the dog toy looking like this today? Was it looking like this 20 years ago? Go ask Google or any search engine of your choice and see what did the dog toy look like 20 years ago? Or who came up with the dog toy? Something that, you're, that you find very curious about and look through the invention journey of that object. So that may make this whole invention process a little more exciting for you to work with. So once we... Um... Once we start uh, finding this thing, so you know, I look around, I find this this cool Lego set, um, and I and I write down um, that the invention was probably um, you know blocks or interlocking blocks, and the innovation um, was taking those interlocking blocks and making them into sets and kits that are you know around interest. So if I write that down, how does that then feed into Scamper? How do I use Scamper to to think about invention and innovation in my house? So the I'm going to uh, talk to you about the process of SCAMPER. SCAMPER is, to, is an acronym that came up from the STEMI organization and the California Invention Convention. And um, it's a way to creatively think about simple inventions or simple gadgets that you can make with objects around the house. And with that, let me show you our friendly little caterpillar that we are going to use for understanding what SCAMPER is. There we go. Do you see the caterpillar here? There we see it. So, uh, God. So SCAMPER is an acronym. So each alphabet stands for a way in which we can innovate simple objects around us. So I'll tell you what it stands for and then I'll illustrate it with a pencil. So if you don't have a pencil, this may be a time that you can grab a pencil and I will wait for a few seconds for you to go do that. And if you are not in a position to grab a pencil, that's totally fine. You all know what a pencil looks like. So just pretend like you have a pencil. So um, SCAMPER, it's S-C-A-M-P-E-R, SCAMPER. If you want to write that down, write that down. If you want to take a picture of this friendly little caterpillar, take a picture, but you will have access to this, pop, uh, this whole slide deck. Um, so S is for substitute, C is for combine, a is for adjust, M is for, it could be for one of the three things, modify, minify, and magnify. P is for put to other use. E is for eliminate, and R is for reverse or rearrange. So that's the whole SCAMPER acronym, and I'm going to get started with SCAMPERing. So, you're gonna answer my question on the chat box. Um, what is this? Can I see some answers on this? What is this? See in there, it's a pencil. What is this? What is this? I like that waving pencil answer. What is this? A baton, a wave, yes. What is this? Or what else is this? Yes, now we are going, now we are scampering. You see that you guys did it. You did scampering already. You came up with ways of what else could this simple little pencil be? This regular good old pencil that we see so many times a day. You just scampered. You said it's wood, it's a stick, it's a wave, it's a baton, it's a wand. That's all. That's exactly what scamper is, folks. You guys got it without me having to go through it. But I want to go back, share my screen, and tell you how you can methodically scamper away. So when I said S is for substitute, what if I substituted a portion of my pencil with something else? What can it be? Now, we have this little eraser at the, at the back end of the pencil, right, that we all know about. And what if I took away the eraser and put a sharpener inside? Like if I had a sharpener right here, what can this pencil be? What can it do? Well, then the next time I need a sharpener, I'm not looking around for it, which I always do. I just remove the sharpener and sharpen my pencil away. So I am thinking of a creative way of what I can do with this pencil. 
So kids who are, who are on right now, I encourage you to um, grab something around your house. Just look around, something you're allowed to grab, uh, something your parents won't mind, um, and, and grab it. Have it in front of you, and as Sharice's talking, keep listening to her, and think about what the other uses could be uh, for that object, or how you might change it um, to, to improve it or make something more. Yeah, so think about, like, we'll do it step by step. Like, so let's start with substituting. If you took a pencil, or you can take a paper clip, or a spoon, anything that you find, a pen, um, and what would you substitute for something inside the object. Like in my case, I said, if I took the eraser out and put a sharpener, that's what I can do with it. What else can you do? Um, Jimmy, I, could you tell me if you see something on the chat? I'm not, when I share my screen, I'm not having access to. Sure, sure. Um, Thank you. Right now, uh, what people are talking about for the, uh, the, the most part is, um, um, other things are finding. Somebody did say launch a projectile. You could, you know, balance something on the end and kind of flick it forward. Yeah. Uh, like, catap like this. Yeah, I, I, that's a great idea. You, you know, like a, a catapult and you can do that. Um. Um, I, you know, I'd like to, uh, well, uh, I'd like to take a quick break and um, bring Meg uh, Drager on. Um, Meg is kind of talking about, frankly, one of my favorite games. Um, uh, Meg, could you could you tell us about what you were kind of bringing up and and what it is? Your microphone is active, I think. Yeah, the game disrupt disruptus. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, I forget the company that produces that game, but it is a great game. Basically, you can play it in a lot of different ways, but and you can even do the same thing without the actual game. You just ask students to come up with, think of one or two objects, like like she brought up the paper clip, something as simple as that, and then challenge kids to come up with, you know, 10, 20, as many different uses as they can for that. Or you combine two objects. Again, the, the whole disruptive game, when you read all through all the rules and ways of playing, it gets at the different scamper techniques to either combine or modify something and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. That's wonderful. That's a great find. It's a really great tool. I use it a lot, um, Meg, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought it up. Um, Disruptus is a game where there's a whole bunch of, of little simple drawings of everything from, you know, a wheel and a flower pot to a dinosaur skull and, you know, all sorts of things. And you roll a die, and based on the roll of the die, you either have to pick two of those and create something new or innovate to something that hasn't existed before or apply it to solve a new problem. And then groups compete. Um, uh, kind of apples to apples style um, to see who has the, you know, the quote best um, solution using those things. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Meg. Wonderful. All right, so, so what's next in this, in this framework, Tree? So the next one is combine. What can I combine with my pencil so that it becomes uh, something else? So I'm gonna say, show you. Um, if I tied a spoon, to my pencil, then I make this longer spoon that I could use for those tall smoothie cups when you get to the bottom and you can't um, get the smoothie out very easily. So if I have to make a spoon longer, um, I could tie it to my pencil to make a longer spoon. So that's an example I am giving you. What can you combine with a pencil to do something else? Or what can you do to combine and make this um, pencil a little more creative? So get it, you know, as we're talking, everyone listening, if you've got ideas for things that you want to share, um, we'd love to um, put you on. Um, I'll share one that's kind of similar to, to what Tri just mentioned. Um, I had, when I was a, a, a lazy, lazy kid, um, I attached a, um, a fork um, to the, the motor that I took out of the back of a car, uh, like a toy car, um, to make a fork that would wind up spaghetti without me doing anything. Um, the problem is it spun so fast that it whipped pasta sauce all over everyone in my family and the walls of my house. So it only got used once uh, before it was taken away from me. But, um, but there, there are lots of solutions that, that, we, that um, you know, we can find for things. So um, if you're listening, what are you thinking about? What could you create? What is the problem that you have that you might be able to create something to solve? 
Um, while we're waiting for those three, um, what's next? The next one is adjust. What if you could adjust this pencil? And when I taught this class to a kindergartner, and I'm gonna give his example, his way of adjusting the pencil is not to have the eraser right here at the end. And he wanted to actually see what would happen if we put the eraser in the middle. Like he said, I don't need the eraser at the end. I want it in the middle. And I said, how would you erase it? And he said, no, I don't want to use it to erase it. I would use it as a balancing beam because I have something in the center to know what's the half point of my pencil. And he could use that pencil on both sides. And, and, and so and it wouldn't be a round eraser. It would be a little bigger so you can still erase it. Um, but that, that was a very creative way of thinking about an eraser in the middle, which is a little bigger. And you could write with both sides of the pencil because um, when the pencil becomes really small, we don't try to use it as much as we, we're not comfortable using it. So that's adjust. So what can you do in terms of adjusting a pencil so it does something else? Is there an idea that we have uh, in terms of adjusting a pencil to do something else or for it to serve another purpose? And the next one, I'm gonna give you the next one too, because the adjust and modify, minify, in the case of a pencil, they're very closely um, related. Modify is when you can change the size of the pencil. And this is an imaginary thing you have to do. It's, um, so let's just imagine if the pencil was so big, um, like it was super big, like it's this huge pole, what can the pencil do? One thing that I thought about is if the pencil was super big, like a big pole, then we could tie a ball to it and play tether ball. So I think, I want... uh, Isabel's got another pencil used too. Isabel, yes. what, what did you come up with? There you go. Um, so I made like a musical instrument, I guess, out of like a pencil because you can go like that to it, like that. Do it, do it close to the microphone so they can kind of hear that sound you're doing. Where's the microphone? Oh, up there. Just close to the computer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, like a percussion instrument. Yeah. Um, Angelo, I, I uh, saw in the chat that you, you've you got a napkin holder. What um what could you do with that? Um. Well, I could try to make it stronger so that napkins won't fall out of the holes, maybe. Is is that a problem? Do you have do you have napkins kind of like as you're using it, pulling napkins out, other napkins kind of slide out? Yeah. Yeah. So so it's uh it's thinking about how to improve things around around the house too. I you know I, I think um yeah. uh, you know kind of fits under this framework. Um, I'm going to do keep that. Keep those keep those coming in the chat. We'd love to keep going back to you um, while we're waiting for those three. I'm going to go put a nap uh, put this in my napkin holder after this class because I love that idea because that's a big problem we always have. Now I, this will stop the napkin from going away. So that's an awesome idea. So, so the modify, uh, when I said you modify the pencil, the shape of the pencil, or you magnify it, you imagine it to be super big. Like I said, if it's a huge pole, I can make a tether ball uh, out of it. And if it's, if I minify, if the pencil is super tiny, small, what could you do with it? The one thing I could think of is it could become a little, um, nail if it depends like a wooden nail if i can use it it's a wooden nail if the pencil was super small because once you sharpen the pencil one edge is so sharp that you could actually pierce through a soft wall and so it could be if the pencil were tiny teeny tiny then it, it's like a wooden nail and so that, th those are examples of adjust modify magnify and minify do we have examples from you on um modifying the pencil and Im being imaginative with magnifying it and minifying it um th there's nothing in the chat yet but but you know i've got one on the, on the minifying side that is not um it's not a pencil um sure. but you know there's um there's a um uh devastating weapon uh the catapult that's been around for a very long time um and i built a couple of years ago this much smaller catapult um just from a, a laser cutter and some magnets um, that becomes not only a toy, um, but it's become um, kind of a game in our house where um, we, we have these little soft kind of balls and um, we try to um, launch messages that we 
right on these balls from one side of the house across to the other. So we've turned it, we've, you know, uh, minified it, minimized it, um, and turned it into a message delivery system instead of a weapon. Um, we, um, when we went camping uh, last year, we did uh, catapult with um, popsicle sticks and we used that to launch marshmallows and play the game of like, how many marshmallows can you get into somebody's mouth by launching mar those tiny little mini marshmallows? That's, I, I like that. Um, and so we, uh, the next one is P, very easy, put to other use. We've already done that. When I started waving my pencil, you said one, a baton. And so P stands for put to other use. What else can you do with a pencil besides writing or drawing? What can you do? Well, how else can you use a pencil? Do we have some thoughts on that? A um, coffee stirrer. Yeah, Ralph, a, a coffee stirrer. To add a little bit of extra, extra flavor from the graphite. Angela, again, um, I, I think accidentally just sent it only to me, but said you can use it to hold something up. Uh, to yeah. prop up a, a door, prop open a door. I see drumsticks, presentation pointer, scratcher, yes. Picture frame, good. All right, so so that's that that puts other use. Um, S A C A M P E. So where e, are we with E? E is for eliminate. Now, if you could remove something from the pencil and put the pencil to another use, what can it be? I I was given this idea by a third grader once. What if we removed the the lead inside the pencil, the the, the graphite that you have that you write with, and the eraser? Then it becomes a wooden straw because it's hollow. Now, so that's a, an example of eliminate, but what would you do if you could eliminate something in the pencil? What else can you do with it? That's E. Somebody and as you think about that, I, I'd like to, um, uh, to, to say not just the pencil, right? If, you, if you're holding something else in front of you and you're watching, um, th that object too, what, what could you eliminate from the thing you have or from a pencil um, to make it into to something else? Um, I'm going to throw, um, if he will let us, um, Ernesto, if you're there, I'm going to start your video and unmute you. Um, if you could talk about um, what you uh, just suggested with uh, using a pencil. Ernesto, are you there? Uh, yes. Yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, what, I've, what I did is uh, I, in the absence of, uh, of a one of those little antenna type things that you use that is magnetic to find metal objects. So I was kind of in a rush. So I got a pencil and I went ahead and tied a magnet that I normally use to, uh, you know, to do demonstrations. I, I'm a science uh, consultant uh, in mm -hmm. El Paso. And what I, uh, what I used is what I did is I tied a magnet at the end and uh, it was actually a pretty strong magnet. And I was able to find the, the items out. And they were actually lodged inside the in my car and between the seat and mm -hmm. the console. And so I went ahead and dug it in there and uh, was able to find, uh, was able to retrieve the items that I had lost. All right, so the, you're not using it metal. to write with. Um, you're using it as, no. a, as an extension no. device um, yes. for the magnet because the magnet yes. in your finger wouldn't get, you know, quite far enough. Yeah, um, my fat, my fat fingers would be able to <laughs> to retrieve those items so what i did is is uh because you know there's like a little there was like a little um a, you know when the seat moves forward there's a little like rack or something like that that the seat goes in yeah and moves forward and back so it was actually lodged in there the magnet was strong enough though to to be able to to dislodge it and and uh, and get it out so uh, Thank you so I much. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, we, we have another interesting one, I think, from uh, Sue. So, I'm, Sue, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Sue, what were you talking about with a pencil? Mine just went outside, uh, but it's really funny. That's okay. If you have a thick straw, mm -hmm. you put your pencil through it, 
and the pencil has to stick out either end and it becomes an axle. And one of our favorite things is have the kids just make a little paper pinwheel that they push into the eraser, then tie a string on the other end with a little paper cup and they can see how you can take wind energy, convert it to mechanical energy, and just hold that straw and the pencil will spin inside the straw. I love that. Straw, and I it, love that. And then they see it lift. And yeah. what they can do is they can put how many paper clips can the wind lift? How many pennies? How many Skittles? That's the a great activity. Fun. Yeah. And if you, if you jam that, that straw through a cardboard box, two of yeah, them. Yeah, that's what we um, do. You, you, can, you can build a vehicle. Um, and a really fun one, you can cut doors and windows, but mm -hmm. leave them attached and put extra string to them. So we do a fairy tale thing with the kids where the three little pigs trick the wolf because when he huffs and puffs, it spins the windmill and all the doors and windows shut. That is very, very cool. Um, yes. I'd like to go to, we, we have a, a surrogate STEM family today because uh, we, we lost the Sicilianos, but um, so I'm gonna go back to Isabel um, and take a look at her new idea. Scissors. Um, so my idea is that you could take scissors and you could take the bolt off of it right here and then you could have like a knife and you know also i think you know as an educator or something especially a lot of times when kids get to be 11 years old that age they've been they've had that creativity schooled out of them mm -hmm. and so you may need to prompt them with some questions so i gave her the scissors and i said but well, Isabel, what would happen because we were talking about what happens if you remove something from the item what happens if you remove the bolt from these scissors? And then she was able to come up with some other ideas. So same with something like a straw. So she had, didn't really have some ideas, but then I said, well, what could you do to the straw? And she started cutting the straw. And that gave her some ideas on some different innovations for the straw. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go one more real quick before we go back to Shri. Um, if She's still there. Uh, the I'm, account says Ralph, um, but there is a... Ralph, are you, are you there? You were there a second ago. I think you walked away. Oh, there you are. Just a minute. You are unmuted. Is she, did, did she step away? I think she stepped away. All right, um, we will go back to uh, uh, Shri. Okay, that was eliminate. And the last one is reverse or rearrange. So what if you reversed things in a pencil or any object like you, whether it's a scissors or a straw or, or a spoon, whatever you're holding, whatever you're scampering away with, what if you reversed or rearranged? What can you do with it? because we always think of writing with a pencil in this way, right? So reverse would be by flipping it upside down. Or, and you can actually also think about combining some of these uh, attributes. Like I, I'm gonna reverse and substitute. I'm going mm -hmm. to reverse and combine. I'm going to reverse and adjust. And you can think of combining these attributes when you scamper. It doesn't have to be just one thing. So I've, uh, while some of our kids are thinking, I've, I've got um, one that I, I think falls under reverse. So um, if any of you were on our, this webinar last, uh, last week with NASA, um, we built these things that you can put your phone into and it, um, it amplifies the sound of your phone through the tube and out the camera, or out the cup. Um, my girls were uh, using this like this, but then one of them discovered that if you kind of flip the cups up instead, um, you can use it as a game um, put a ball in one cup, you can fling it to the person, the other person who can catch it in their cup um, and fling it back. So they, by, by kind of rearranging and turning the, the components of what was initially designed as a speaker, they turned it into, you know, a catch and throw game. That's a perfect illustration for how you can actually scamper away with everything that we are working on. That's awesome, Jeremy, because the whole idea of doing this scampering process right now is because A, we have time on our side. We're sitting at home. And B, for those of you who may have missed a birthday or who are expecting a delivery of a tie or something, or maybe your tie broke, what can you do to scamper away? That way you're not waiting, you're not having, because you won't be able to go to the store to buy a small part or, what can you do if you don't have a, your wand? What can you do? So the idea of doing a scamper right now is to be creative and innovate your boredom where you're thinking of new games or coming up with 
you know, Germany's kids, what they did. That's, that's an awesome game that, you know, we have time on our side. So that's exactly where scamper will help because once you put that scamper in your head and start scampering away, when we all go back to our, um, what was a normal life, uh, we will be able to problem solve very easily because we have that scampering mindset in us now. We will be able. We won't be stuck. Like the example with the car magnet and the pencil to remove something. That that's a great example. It's it's to create. It's you know, that creative problem solving mindset will sink in if you start using scampering as a process to get there. And and you know, uh, Sri, I, I I think we've got a really great way to to close this out because exactly what you're saying. You know, you start this process of thinking about that acronym of thinking about those steps. And it um it uh, kind of really changes your brain um, into just seeing everything as an opportunity, an opportunity to make something new, an opportunity to make something better. I remember reading, um, I'm looking at my shelf over here, um, there's a book called The Design of Everyday Things, which is um, just a, a book about, about the design process. Um, and I remember reading that book. And after I read that book for a good you know, two or three months, everywhere I saw kind of design problems. Um, now with this, I can see how um, we could use this to, to start seeing everything as an opportunity. Um, and a really good example of that, I think, is, is uh, Isabel, who didn't even know she was going to be on camera today, by the way. So, so thank you, Isabel, for, for jumping in and doing that. Um, and she's been doing all the things you've asked and more. Um, Isabel, what did, um, I, I understand that you uh, just created something else. What did you just create? Um, well, I, I was just like playing around with this and I created like a spoon thing like that. Out of a straw. Out of a straw because mm -hmm. I had opened up one of the sides like this. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome, and and I I'm positive um, that not only will will you keep doing this, um, but that your your mom, being who she is, will will continue to share. Um, everybody who's here um, and participating and listening, if you think of things around your house that you could change and improve, um, take a picture of them, tell us about them. You can tweet us at stemecosystems.org or email us at info at stemecosystems.org. We'd love to put those up on the website, share them with Sri, um, so that she can see the things that you've that you've created um Shri, do you have any final thoughts for us yes um i would love to um see what you all come up with and i, I want to leave you with a little the, the boredom basket that we were talking about earlier on put five things that you can maybe you have some easter egg those plastic ones maybe a spoon maybe uh, um a whisk whatever put five things in your boredom basket and that way you are restricted to five things and you know and you can start scampering with those five things and see what can i do with these five things and then replace it with another five things for the next week so you can create your scamper away basket um or like or, or even a bag whatever you can a, a plate a tray whatever and create your little boredom bag and start with that bag and say okay i'm bored i'm i'm what mm -hmm. can i do just use that and um I, I wanted to show you some examples of what our students and our programs have done uh, with invention in that way, because I get this question a lot about like, are you telling me that third graders or second graders are inventing? And um, I just want to put some context to how creative problem solving leads to invention. I'll quickly share. Yeah. Yeah, could you sh show us a couple of your absolute favorites? Um, while yeah. Shri's getting that ready, if you're listening and you're interested in being a STEM family, if you're a student and interested in being the on-camera um, student, please go ahead and say something in the chat and um, our folks will reach out to your parents. Um, you also can have your parents email us at info at stemecosystems.org. All right, Tree, what are one or two of your absolute uh, favorites? So I, I wanted to show you, so we have students learning 3D printing and they do Da Vinci bridges, but I want to show you what they, um, our classes, our classes are more like unconventional in that they are lying down and creating things. So they go to the recycle center and learn about what sustainability is. But here are some inventions. I'm going to show you this first one is a third grade invention. The problem this kid was trying to solve was for kids who have chronic um, spine, neck and back issues for them to, when they write, uh, they don't have to bend and write. So she was thinking of a way, how could someone sit and write straight without having to bend down on a table? So what she basically did was fused two chairs. So it's like two chairs coming together where you could actually sit erect and write. So you're not having chronic back issues. So 
and she's still working. That is so cool. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. So and solving a real problem for, yes, for a so classmate we, or yeah. the community. So we spend 90% of our time figuring out what problem to solve and understanding the problem. And then the invention happens super fast. And in this year, we started on our inventions right when schools closed and mm -hmm. lockdowns were in place. So kids invented via remote uh, sessions like this and with things at home. So that's where this scampering really helps. Like, what can I do? I cannot go to Home Depot. I cannot go right. to the store. What can I do? So they and there's so, there's so many resources right in our houses that we don't think yes. about, that we walk yes. past every day. We talk a lot in ties about how everybody talks about needing our kids to be problem solvers. What we don't talk about a lot is that we need our kids to be problem finders exactly. um, to look for the, the opportunities for improvement. Um, you want to show us one more quick one before yes, we close really out? Yes, quick. Uh, to, so the, the, the last one is a bamboo scooter where kids invented a bamboo scooter to solve the problem of metal, metallic scooters, which end up uh, when it's a shared scooter, they end up in landfill in under 28 days. So they didn't want things ending up in landfill with, that cannot be, um, that's not renewable. So and it's a sustainable, a, biodegradable scooter. Yes, uh, for urban mobility. Those are eighth graders. And the one in the middle is a scampering with a potato masher. So you can see a flat flashlight, you can see a little solar oven, you can see where it was reversed and it's a huge hook to hang your coats. Um, so there's a reverse and a combine here. So those are some examples. So you can take pretty much anything and start scampering away. So outstanding. Think about, um, scampering and one, uh, what, what ASC is, it's Scouts Meet Sierra Club. So we are like scout, like how you, you meet on a weekly basis, you learn the STEM invention ecosystem, but it's more got the Sierra Club favor because uh, you be look at the environment and look at problems like what Jeremy said, problem finders in our environment and see how can we solve them. And then whether it's a bamboo scooter or uh, there are other inventions um, that are sustainable that our kids have come up with. And so if you want to learn more about ASC Innovate, which is a Free program. Uh, there is my marketing plug here. <laughs> you can see all of the ways to, to contact Shree and ASC Innovate. Um, Isabel, can you, uh, can you close us out? What did you learn today? Um, well, since school is out, I've been like really bored at home. So I learned that if I'm bored, I can literally just take like anything and scam for it and try to figure out something new that it can be. Excellent. Uh, me too. Um, well, thank you, Shri. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Siciliano family. Um, this has been a STEM family virtual lab from STEM at Home brought to you by the STEM Lurking, Learning e can't talk today. I'm so excited about scampering that I can't read. Uh, brought to you by the STEM Learning Ecosystems and Ties. Thank you for joining us today and come back next week on Tuesday for a community conversations, race and COVID in America, a conversation to unify our nation. And next Thursday, April 23rd for a virtual lab STEM sports quarantine kickstart at 1 p.m. Eastern time. These virtual labs revolve around successful models and new ideas to support STEM learning experiences during and beyond this time of social distancing. Stay tuned to stemecosystems.org for upcoming live events, resources, and more. Please continue to participate and share. I'm Jeremy Shore, and we will see you next time.